this had occurred to you, you had thought of her in a sexual way before that day, had you not? Not about her, about acts, about things that she talked about that is more or less the act. I didn't think about her. You, you never felt an attraction to her before that day you saw her naked? No. I find that really hard to believe. I did not think of her in sexual ways. I... Well, is this an addiction? I mean, you're interested in knowing that, right? Absolutely. Uh, is sexual addiction a real disease, or is it just an excuse for bad behavior? Now, I have to tell you, the medical community, the psychiatric community, the psychological community is very divided over this issue. Now, Dr. David Lay is a clinical psychologist, and he does not support the diagnosis of sexual addiction. Tell me why not. When people get in trouble, and it has a sexual component on it, we automatically say it was the sex that made them do it. But the reality is, people make bad decisions and either take responsibility for it or don't. James can make better decisions in the future regardless of sexuality's involvement. Right, now Dr. Gary Stolman is a psychotherapist and he believes that in fact sexual addiction is real. Why, why do you say that, doctor? As much as they try to get away from the pattern, as much as they try to white knuckle it and not allow themselves to engage in these sexual behaviors that cause harm to themselves and others, they end up falling back into it time and time again. So I think it's a compulsion and it's very difficult to resist. You know what he's talking about is, is there, there's a pattern here that you usually see in people that fall into, whether you call it a compulsion or you call it an addiction, those that tend to fall into this pigeonhole, you go back into their life and you go, wow, there, there's a high frequency and intensity of sexual behavior in their past that lead up to this that would differentiate them from someone not in that category. Is that a fair characterization? What would you add? Sexuality isn't the problem. James's issues with anger and James's problems with his relationship is the problem. I listened to both gentlemen in I understand some of the things and I can see some of the similarities and patterns in my life, but I could also see what he was saying about the anger, about resentment, about, it, it, it's not, it was probably a little bit of both, but as far as behaviors, I think at a very young age, I've always wanted to please. And probably to a fault. Okay, we have to take a break. I have a The question is, after someone has betrayed you, can the relationship ever be the same? Dr. Lay, you're saying that this may be a product of, of anger or other issues. Do you really expect this wife to say, well, it just happened to show up sexually, but it really is something else? If we say it's just about sex, then we can say, oh, look, we're going to control sexuality and we're, going to, we're just going to have healthy, normal sexuality now and James is going to be in control of his sexuality and our problems go away. Well, the reality is this couple has a lot of work to do. Sex is only a little tiny part of the problem. There's a lot of other things to focus on. Dr. Stolman? Well, I agree that there's a lot of things to focus on here. But what typically happen, happens in sex addicts is that they have difficulty regulating their emotions. So when they feel angry or they feel hurt or they feel anxious or they've lost their job, what they then do is the way that they are able to cope with their emotions is by focusing on sex. So it's not about sex, but for sex addicts, it becomes about sex because that's the, the way that they could escape and better cope with their emotions. They have no other ways of doing it. What do you take away from all of this? I honestly don't know if sex is an addiction or not.